Hello friends and fellow traders, this is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options. And a week ago, I did a class on repeating patterns that every trader should know. Now I've had quite a big response to that, quite a few folks asking questions, comments and things. So I thought I'd do a quick follow up. This is just exactly one week later um, as I'm putting this together. I thought I'd do a quick follow up and maybe answer some of those questions and um, maybe dig into some the details just a little bit more so let's jump over to some charts now this is a chart I talked about in uh, that class and it was it was right um, right in here where I was talking about this potential trade setup now remember one of the primary things that we're talking about here is repeating chart patterns the most common chart patterns that are out there I'm going to switch to something's called a naked that I call a naked chart and I just want to show you um, in this naked chart if I just remove everything some of the key elements of the pattern that I'm talking about first off we want to find stocks that have reversed a downtrend or are just simply trending so I'm looking at this stock here in Huntsman and you can see how we had this amazing downtrend um, in Huntsman for a long time and how clearly that downtrend de demonstrates right here where I've drawn that line demonstrates those failure points that place where we rally back we find that resistance so if you're looking for that short trade here's the pattern that you're looking for you want to look for just a second let me clean all that off and I'm going to redraw this downtrend line what we want to look for in a in any short trade is we want to look for that a failure a stock moving lower that rally back to resistance and then a failure pattern to occur there's our short trade entry into this move down another one right here another one right here another one right here those are really really good short pattern setups because we're failing right at a known resistance trend and makes for some really great trading um, if you just learn to follow some of those patterns but one of my favorite patterns to trade long is a pattern um, my partner uh, and good friend Rick Sadler actually uh, put this pattern together it's called a rounded bottom breakout he put a name to it and um, some rules around trading it. Now the round and bottom breakout is we're trying to catch that reversal, that reversal when we were in a downtrend and now suddenly we break through that downtrend, hold it and buyers come into that trade. So looking at this pattern, if we take a quick look, this is just a little bit of a review. If we take a just a quick look at our moving averages here and you can see our moving averages are all starting to round up all of those moving averages are creating what's called a moving average squeeze right in this area where we have price support of our moving averages our downtrend has been broken and an uptrend has started to begin and I love these patterns because they're really great productive patterns um, probably one of the best producing uh, profit producing patterns um, you can trade in my opinion and so I'm going to go back here to this naked chart just for a second and I want to note note that the really the key elements to trading this pattern are we need we need the downtrend to break Okay, and after that downtrend breaks, we want to make sure that this pri the price of the stock can hold that downtrend as support. So you can see we popped up through here, consolidated, and then buyers stepped in. Now, one of the questions I get a lot, what do you mean when you say buyers stepping in? Well, what I'm talking about is some kind of bullish candle signal I'm looking for. Uh, as we have right here, we've had a nice little move up we had three days of consolidation uh, through here and we had a bullish engulfing candle produce breaking through this level of resistance okay that's what I mean by buyer stepping in now it doesn't have to be a bullish engulfing candle it can be a, a kicker pattern it can be a piercing pattern you know whatever your favorite um, 
candlestick pattern might be that's what i'm looking for in here i'm looking for that good positive signal that buyers have decided that the stock has gone down long enough and it's ready to start going up now the next question i get all the time in this is well do you buy this on this candle or on this candle or do you wait for that candle to close and that's a really good question and, and one that um, every trader has to work through the details of that. So for example, for me, if I do an evaluation of the overall market, if I'm very confident in the overall market, the market's looking strong, it's bullish on that day, everything's looking pretty good, I will take this signal as it's being produced and I will usually have a price alert placed. Um, when you see pink lines on my chart, um, I do that to highlight a potential price alert where I'm waiting for the trade to come to me. And what I mean by waiting for the trade to come to me, I literally look for trades that are in a trend and then I just simply wait for the next entry into the trade. And I'll explain this just a little bit further. So whatever that buy signal is, Morningstar pattern, whatever we want to pay attention to. Now, the other key element to any long trade is we want to buy the stock when it's very close to its uptrend. Okay, just like we did in the downtrend, we want to catch those moves up. We want to catch that failure pattern in here to take the short. We want to catch that move up, can be a consolidation or a pullback. And we want to look for that area where we're starting to prove that we're holding downtrend and we're, we're holding the break of the downtrend and we are I'm reacting bullishly to the uptrend. So you, what you'll normally see on all of my charts is you're gonna see these trend lines marked, okay? Because all I'm looking for is the evidence that buyers or sellers are continuing to follow along with that current trend. Now, the majority of time, stocks love to come back to their trend before they move. There are times where a stock can, quite a few times actually, where a stock can actually change its tra trajectory of its trend. And we do have to watch for those early potential signals from time to time. Now, I will tell you on this stock, this was my actual alert. I entered this trade on this day, okay? Now let's talk about how we manage that trade. You can see we get into this position and the stock pulls back. Now when I get into a position ahead of a trend before I move over to the trend, I always know there's a possibility that that pullback could occur. That little consolidation, that rest, that pullback could occur because I'm entering it before it came back to its trend. Okay, so I'll watch that closely. And when I do that, I have to respect the price action of the chart. So for example, my stop loss in here was below this tail when I enter this trade. Now I know there's some folks out there saying, well, there's no way I wanna take that much risk in a trade like this. I don't wanna take that much of a stop loss risk. That's okay, then don't take this trade. See, the point is we have to all make an evaluation of each chart and make sure that we it's agreeable with us, it fits our risk tolerance, that we can follow along. But if we fake, if we decide to arbitrarily set a stop loss on this and say, well, I can't take that much risk, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to buy this trade when it breaks out, but my stop loss is going to be right here. You're going to constantly be fighting losing trades. You'll never be very successful at this because you're not respecting what the price action of the chart is telling you. So you can see in this trade, we did get that pullback after entry into that trade and we moved over here to trend. And this is where the stock found those buyers and we started moving higher. So the Huntsman trade, nice positive trade. This, by the way, is a stock trade. The options in this um, are not good. And my initial target on this trade is right up in here at this next resistance level. 
that's my initial target to move it up here toward that level. Now I f I'm fully aware of the fact that this could move up, continue to consolidate, or could move straight up, or could move up and consolidate across here and continue on up. It does any of those patterns are acceptable to me. What I don't want to see is I don't want to see the stock starting to fail. If we fail back down through here, I got to close the trade. That's all there is to it. We, we've broken trend, we're breaking support levels. I don't want to see that occur. So this needs to hold on to its trend and just continue to move to the upside. And that's how I can put together sometimes some really long trades, um, just following a trend and, and uh, managing that trend um, all the way up. Now the goal in the round of bottom breakout the ultimate goal in the round of bottom breakout is a um, reversion of the mean, basically. It's what I call it. And when we measure this trade down into here, this was our full sell-off in this trade. What we're looking for is a move back up here toward this 200-day moving average. Now that 200-day moving average is continuing to fall. So what we're looking for is somewhere here in the middle. We, we already mentioned that this might be a resistance area in the chart. So there's one target. There's a potential right here of two targets. And I have to respect the fact that somewhere up in here, we're going to run into this major resistance area right around that 200 day moving average. And if I can stay with that trade through that period of time, um, obviously I have a great profit in the position, but at the same time, I'm respecting the price action of the chart over here showing me those support and resistance levels. And I'm willing to take those profits as we move into these areas if we start to fail. Um, one of the things that you will commonly see with me is as we move up to these resistance areas, I'm going to go back to this chart here. Um, if we, as we move up into these resistance areas, I'm usually taking profits or looking for reasons to take some profits in the trade. So for example, if you picked up this trade and let's say you picked up uh, 500 shares of this stock. Uh, I did trade this as a stock trade, by the way. And we move up into here and I start to show some kind of a pattern that could look like a failure. As I'm moving up into this area, I'm likely going to take some profits. So I may take, uh, maybe I sell 200 shares right here. I'll take 200 shares off of this trade. I'll put some money in my account. That's what I want to do all the time keep putting money in my account and then I will manage this trade so I've taken some of the pressure off of the position if this has to consolidate if this has to pull back at that point I really don't care at all what what goes on here at this point as long as it doesn't fail its trend or start breaking support levels and then as the trade comes back around if it consolidates itself if it moves itself up into here moves over that buy signal may come in and I can stay in this trade and start moving or looking for those next resistance levels above and continue with that trade. So for example, on a 500 uh, position trade, I might take 200 shares off here. If we can move up into this next level, I can take 100 shares off here and just let that trade continue to work while I'm continuing to to bank profits. If I'm doing this with options, I'm going to do the same thing. If I'm in a five contract trade, I may take off two of the contracts here, or one up here, or one up here, and, and just continue to um, manage that position to that profitable conclusion. Now, what you'll often find too is, is I'm going to be hedging those positions. So I'm just answering a lot of questions as I'm going through this process, a lot of questions that have been popping up. What would you do with this trade? Let me show you another trade that I showed a lot of during that class a week ago, and that was the, the stock in JD. Okay. Now the JD position, you're seeing the exact same pattern here, our downtrend. We have a nice downtrend. Stock breaks above that downtrend. And here's the key element. For the first time, it pulls back and holds. It holds that price 
above his its downtrend, holds on to that downtrend, and right here we see buyers stepping up in here, pushing this up through this level. Okay, so that was my entry into this trade. Okay, I really should change this line to pink. Um, that was my entry into this trade, and that was when I sent out an alert to all members and everything about this position. So stock pushes up, we clip through here, we enter that trade, and I entered this with options positions. And as the stock moved up, my initial target up here was around 25. Okay, stock moved up. We moved up really good here for about three or four days. And you can see we had this nice pop in here. When this occurred, we moved up here sharply. I, I was long um, option contracts here. By the way, I was long the March contracts in the money, March contracts. When this popped up here, I went ahead and sold the 26 strike calls on this trade. So I allowed the stock to move up, then sold the call options. If I were, if this stock were to have continued on up and I get called away from that, that trade, that just gives me more potential profit if I happen to clip up there around those 26 strikes and I get called away on that position. But what happened here is the stock pulled back. Pretty normal price action, the stock pulls back, test price support kind of lounged around here and then finally started up right here around its trend again and this is looking very very good so when that starts showing that pattern again here's that pattern this is a pullback and the stock starts moving back up then what I will do is I will close my short strike up here allow my long strikes to continue to work and I'm continuing to move this toward my first target in the trade so really nice profit working here on the JD trade right now. And by the way, let me just tell you this. If you would enter this trade right here and just felt, you know, this right here was enough, take that trade off. Um, some of our members took trade uh, profits up here of like 25% on that. Just that really quick position. Uh, just moving this up right here um, into that next little resistance. We pop through this little resistance, right up in here into this little resistance area. If that's plenty, I mean, where else are you gonna go where you can make 25% in four days? I, I mean, seriously, this is just awesome stuff. And if you learn to follow these price patterns and stop trying to predict, all you have to do is wait for a trending stock to prove to you that it's ready to continue, enter that trade, and follow that stock up. So this has been a very positive pattern. Let me show you um, another one of those that is um, considerably different, and um, but just as important of a pattern. VIPS, if we look at VIPS, VIPS right here broke its longer term downtrend. There's our downtrend break. You can see it right here. Stock rallies up, comes back, tests as support. But notice what happens here. We hit this price resistance right through this area and the stock struggles, struggles to get through here. And so we just bounce around in this trading range. Now during this time, all we're doing is really pulling that moving average out. Let me show you what the moving average is here. All we're doing is completing or pulling out, stretching out this rounded bottom breakout pattern. Notice we're staying right in this area. We're staying above here. We have that moving average squeeze that just continues to fire off and buyers continue support to support this area in here. So let's go back here and look at this chart like this. So what we did here is we just set up a range bound area and just dragging that 50 day moving average out this way. But, but we continued to hold in this consolidation area. So we have this nice little consolidation in here. Now when that's going on, this is the way I look at a consolidation like this. And you can like this or not like this, it's fine with me. Um, but if you look right here, um, I look at this upper level, there's no buyers above this level. There's no sellers 
below this level. So all I have to do is wait for the entry into the trade. Now I'm going to be favoring this long because we are still holding above this downtrend. We're trying to transition back to the upside. So you could have chosen to take this trade. Notice right here, this takes a lot of bit of it, a lot of attention to detail, but you can see right here, this was a higher low. And this is one of my favorite chart patterns right here. Um, I'm a, it's, it's obviously not a textbook perfect morning star pattern, but that's a pattern that I look for. And notice that that low was higher. Okay. That low was a little bit higher. This one here was also a little bit higher. That one was false breaks it down. So does it work every time? Absolutely not. But if you manage that trade, entering that position on that morning star pattern, respected that resistance, that was still a profitable position. So you can see this higher low. So there was a potential entry in this trade breaking above that resistance right there. There's that little morning star type pattern, nice little wedge formed in here and the stock moved up breaking through. But what I really want you to focus on is that w the continuation of this pattern and how important this is. We continued this move on up here. So we moved on through, we broke through this resistance finally. We came back, we tested as support. So whether you entered right here or whether you entered right here really didn't matter. It's the same trend, it's the same setup over and over and over. You don't have to be any kind of genius to, to pick up on this. You don't have to be any kind of uh, really uh, you know, stock predictor, or any of that kind of thing. All we're doing is following a chart that's proving it wants to go up and it's being supported by buyers. The stock is respecting support and resistance and it's being supported by buyers as they begin to push it up. So entering this trade, by the way, a good rule of thumb is when a stock breaks through like this and comes back to a support level, we want to be careful buying that first candle pop up. And the reason is I'm seeing this happen, happen an awful lot nowadays, that stock will pop real quickly after, after a pullback, and then it gets sold into the next couple of days. So you'll want to watch that. What I like to look for is two, three, four little days of little rest right in here. Three little doji type candles right here and then the break above. So an alert right here would have been about the perfect alert to have entered that trade, holding that support, holding that trend. That's exactly what we want to see in a chart. And as we continue to move up in here, we have to learn to watch and respect. The reason this stock is probably has that wick on that, ta um, on that candle is because we ran right into this price resistance. Okay right into this price resistance. And I would expect the next move in this chart would either be a consolidation to move over to trend or a pullback to seek out that trend again before it moves back up. So we can do either of those. By the way, it's also possible uh, enough momentum the stock could pop through and then pull back. So you'll want to watch those patterns very closely and just pay attention to the chart. But we're seeking out, we're holding support, we're seeking out price resistance, and it's almost perfect to, to the letter. I mean, it's it, that's what I look for in charts. I don't want a chart that is really jumpy. I don't want a chart that's really whippy. I know a lot of people only want to trade those stocks that are just in the news, only in the news. Just give me something that I've heard of that, that um, gets lots of attention. Those charts tend to be very, very volatile, okay? Really volatile because they're so newsy. But if you can avoid those um, stocks like that with just these really simple type trades may not be in the news all the time may not be really jumpy i'm looking for that deliberate clean price action i want the easy trades and there's so many of these right now it's just amazing how many price patterns like this there are in the charts um, our, our members made a really good money and still in a trade um, some are still in a trade. I actually took profits on this trade here in Facebook. Um, there's that entry. Here's the same price pattern that we talk about, that move up, that consolidation. There's the buyer stepping in. We enter that trade. Stock moves up. 
we make money on it. Okay, really simple move. And I ended up closing this trade. I, I only think I made about a 16% profit on the trade using options, but you know, 16% um, doesn't stink. Okay, let's take a look at, at some of these others. There's just tons of these charts right now. And uh, members, members in right way made money on this pattern. There's that downtrend, the break of the downtrend, the push above this resistance. There's those four little candles, four little resistance or support type spinning top dojis holding that support level, our buy signal right here, buyer stepping into this trade. Nice move. I know several of our, of our trading of our members in um, right way options made money on this. There's that trend again. Isn't it amazing how we're sticking to these patterns and showing that same thing? It's repeating over and over and over. And by the way, if if I were to drop a line right in here, isn't it amazing that right here where we touch this level, touch this level, we hit that level and we pull back. Just respecting price support and resistance in these charts. So just taking this to a little bit more detail, answering some of those questions. Hopefully you guys are seeing there is merit to this. All we have to do is pay attention to price. We don't have to be predictive. We don't have to do anything fancy here. Just find some really good trending charts or those reversing their trend and wait for the entry into the trade. Um, AOS. AOS is another one of these patterns. You can see in this chart, we have a beautiful round of bottom breakout pattern. There's our downtrend. We break above that 50 day moving average. We get that nice little accumulation here of all these moving averages providing that squeeze. We get that nice little consolidation right here. See that nice little tight consolidation right there showing us that nice tight area there's where I place my alert. Now that alert was placed early in here. And I, what I was trying to do is catch an early entry into this trade. So you can see it pops up, moves back, pops up. Now we've defined our trend. We'll just watch for this chart to continue to do this as long as it can. I have no idea how long it could go. I only know that uh, as long as I pay attention and wait for the next entry into these trades, if you missed this one, just wait for the next one. We're going to probably find some resistance right here in this price of this chart. Here, let me go back to naked here for just a second. Probably going to find some resistance right here in the price of this chart. So we'll have to wait for that next in entry into the trade. If we're going to trend up, we might move on up into here and pop out and then pull back. We might hit this level and consolidate and then pop out. We might move up and pull back and then pop out. As long as we continue to hold that trend, we have an opportunity in this position. Now, a question I get asked all the time, and this is really, really important. It took me forever. I mean, I struggled with this for a long, long time. And that is, <clears throat> we always want to have, as traders, we want to have lots of confidence that a stock is moving up. And so what we often do is wait too long to get the entry into the trade. So here's a mistake I used to make all the time. I would make the mistake of thinking, well, I see this price resistance here. I have to have this stock break through that price resistance before I can enter that trade. So we get that breakthrough of that. I would enter that position and I was failing to recognize that what I was doing was buying stocks that were right at resistance. Look what happens here. It hits resistance. We have the potential of that pullback failure. And so I would buy up here and immediately have to suffer the pullback. I would get that pullback in here. I would end up getting stopped out just before the stock would turn right back around, come right back up and continue to maintain its trend. Okay. So instead of buying stocks at resistance, I want to make sure that I'm buying stock 
at support. Don't be buying stock or making a habit of buying stock at resistance. I know there's a lot of books out there to say, you know, buy the breakout. But what's happened, uh, you know, in the market today, all of the all of the computer algorithms and things out there have figured out this pattern. OK, they've figured out this pattern and you buy that breakout. You almost always suffer some kind of a pullback, end up getting stopped out in the trade because the risk starts getting too large. And um, if you just wait, if you wait for them to the buyers to show themselves right here near support just think about that for a second if you buy this candle right here your stop loss is going to be very close if this stock does reverse you have very little risk in this trade if you buy this candle right here your stop loss needs to be below this swing low right so you're taking a much bigger risk in this trade than if you just buy when we see um, those um, in, you know, buyers and institutions picking up right near price support. So kind of keep that in mind. We always want to buy near support, not near resistance, okay, in these charts. If we take a look at DWDP, we talked about this trade for a long time in right way. There's that beautiful move up. Let's show you those moving averages. There's that round to bottom breakout, moving up above that 50 day moving average and just dragging those moving averages left, I mean to the right, and until we finally get those buyers stepping up. You can see my price alert on this chart. Nothing fancy about that. Stock popping up through here and you certainly could have picked up on um, a buy signal um, just there we, go. we could have picked up on a buy signal in here and tried to catch that real early that really probably would have been acceptable in here but this breaks right through here uh, very little risk in this trade and here again it's that little pattern here I call it the pop out of the box that's where we get this tight consolidation Okay, that tight consolidation where we're looking for uh, buyers or sellers. We, we know there's no buyers above this level. We know there's no sellers below this level. And the reason we know that is price can't break through that. Sellers can't break down through here. So we're waiting for that next entry. And because this had already broken its downtrend and is starting to show that uptrend, I'm going to favor the upside of this move. So I'm always going to be watching for that pop out right here. And you can see how that's playing out in the trade. Now, once again, we look at this chart. We have to honestly evaluate price action in this chart. If I were to drop a line right in here, you can see there's a significant level of price resistance right through here. So any rally that continues up into here we have to respect that as a potential resistance zone and be looking to take some profits if this has to pull back into here and then still go up that's okay with me if it has to consolidate over to here to continue moving up that's okay with me but i have to respect this price resistance and start thinking about taking profits at or near price resistance okay Let's take a look at, um, I'm just showing you, um, wanting to show you a bunch of different patterns um, that repeat themselves over and over and over in the market. So here's a significantly different pattern in the fact that the 200 day moving average, as you can see, was also part of this moving average squeeze. All of these averages came together. We did have the downtrend. Our 50 day moving average crossed over the 200 day moving average. But if we take a look at this pattern, all of these moving averages pr provided that really nice tight uh, moving average squeeze in here. So what we want to look for, we don't want to be chasing necessarily in this trade, but let's take a peek and see how we might have been able to trade um, this position. So one of the key elements for me, um, as I keep mentioning, is the stock needs to break its downtrend. So if I'm watching um, this price action of this chart, I want to see this stock break this downtrend. Now I could have measured it right here. We had this outlier right here. 
I could have measured it here. And by the way, there's the break. Here's the pullback. Here's a hammer and follow through or a morning star pattern right here testing this downtrend. See how that works? It's just amazing how that works. I chose, however, I chose to measure this this way. I put my downtrend right across here. So I wasn't really worried about this pattern here. What I was worried about or paying attention to is this break and this pullback holding this area. And you can see buyer stepping up in here, breaking through that little pullback resistance area here and moving straight on through. So a little rest here on a day um, that you could have easily picked up on this day too, just by using that little bit of a pullback rest right here. But now we're looking at um, Nike moving on up. And once again, I'm gonna look for those resistance levels in this chart. Where could we find price resistance? Probably right in here is a pretty decent level. Notice how all of these candles, we get a candle touch right in here. We have the support of this little price action right in here. A little candle touch right in here, holding that level, breaking down right through here. So that's a fairly significant price level. And I'm watching the stock move up toward that resistance. We would have to be thinking about taking profits up into here. But as long as this stock continues to hold on to this trend, I want to maintain and watch this position. So if this has to pull back into here, there may be an opportunity up into here. I think if this were to consolidate and go sideways, there just wouldn't be enough potential profit into this resistance zone for me to want to take that trade. The pullback would be better for me. Or just simply to wait for this to break out and hold that trend in here. Then I would be interested in that, in that trade. So Nike, you can see that same pattern, a little, little bit different look to the chart, but that same kind of pattern showing up in there. Let's take a look at Marvel, MRVL. Notice the same price patterns. I'm gonna first go over here to our moving averages to see that we have that same rounded bottom breakout pattern occurring here. This one is um, setting up right now. And there's that downtrend break. If we move back here to my naked chart, there's that downtrend break. Stock rallying up, pulling back to this little price support level. And you can see that I have my alert on this trade right here, okay? And we did pop through that on Friday and pulled back. It's okay if a stock bounces around. Remember what I said, be really careful on that first pop-up. We'll often find um, uh, they've deciphered this pattern as well on that pullback. That first pop-up can often be sold into, particularly if this pullback is relatively strong. Then what we'd look for is this to bounce around in here and find its way back out. So we'll have to watch this chart. It could bounce around here and come right back up. This could push right on through and bounce in on into here, but we just have to pay attention to that price action in that chart. The key elements again, we broke the downtrend. We're holding price support as support. That's what gives me the interest in this trade and why I want to pay attention to this position in Marvel. eBay eBay, same price pattern. Isn't it amazing how many there are of these right now? And this is just a small list of a huge list that I have of stocks doing this. Breaking that downtrend. Notice how clear and defined that downtrend is. Breaking down through that level and then popping up through this price resistance right here and holding it as support. So holding it as support, you can see, um, let me throw my alert on this trade. Stock breaking up through this level, holding right in here. There is a little bit of a morning star pattern right here that could have been an entry signal. There could have been an entry signal right here. That's an acceptable as long as you use underneath that tail for your, so your stop loss. This is an acceptable pattern. And the first move is probably going to be the move up here that fills this gap. And then we'll start looking for those subsequent levels up here that we can start breaking through in that trade. So we want this to hold onto its trend. OK, 
Okay. Hold on to its trend. Hold on to the support level and just keep making those moves that we're looking for in these charts. And by the way, guys, these trends can go on and on and on and on. You never know how long a trend will go and you never want to try and predict when the top is. It, it's just as it's just as wrong to try and predict a bottom as it is to try and predict a top. Just follow the price section of the chart. Price is king and the trend will stay the trend until the trend fails. Just let the trend work and stay with the position. Here's another great chart. Members of RWO will um, would confirm this. Um, when this popped up through here, there was a considerable amount of chatter because right here at one point in the day, that was a nice bullish engulfing candle right there. And I suggest to everyone be careful with this entry right here because our trend is over here. And it's very possible if you enter that trade, this will still move over toward its trend. That's exactly what happened. And it's not because I'm trying to predict that. It's because I see this pattern over and over and over again where that first entry We'll do that. Now, here's the thing. Here's the cool thing about it. If you do happen to jump on that first entry, okay, right in here when that was a bullish candle, if you placed your stop loss correctly, okay, down below this tail, the tail of this candle right here, placed your stop loss correctly down below that tail, you're still in that position and there's no problem with that trade. Okay, so as long as you're willing to uh, manage that stop loss and stay with that position we will, and respect what the trend is telling us, moving over to that trend, we'll look for this to move on out somewhere in here. Now, by the way, where I have this trend drawn, please keep in mind, this I don't know for sure. I, I've got this right here giving me, here's my low and here's my trend beginning. But I don't know for sure if this will maintain this perfect trend, okay? So this line may have to be adjusted just slightly where those buy signals start to come in on that trend. One of the great things um, that you see in a lot of roundabout breakout patterns is this right here. This is an inverted head and shoulders pattern. Those tend to produce really good profits. And so we'll just watch this trade as it develops and pay attention to that position as it moves along. And then we have to look up here and where's our next targets in the trade. There's a next resistance target. There's a resistance target right there. And we just keep moving this trade up, looking for those targets for price resistance in the trade. Just continue to manage that position right on up in this trend. Works perfectly um, if you just pay attention to that price action. Don't have to predict. You don't have to do anything fancy. Okay? Just keep an eye on that simple pattern, that simple trade, and it just works over and over and over again. Let's take a look at a company, um, MU. Now, the reason I'm identifying or showing you MU here is MU, as you noticed, still hasn't broken this downtrend. I get this question a lot, okay? And that is, well, geez, this has got higher lows. This is, you know, making good patterns here. This is exactly what we want to see in a chart. And that is true. And if we look at our moving averages, you can see that we're still below our 50 day moving average. It's rare when I'm going to take a trade that's still below its 50 day moving average, unless I go to an intraday chart and, and I'm looking for a really quick intraday type trade. But the majority of time, I don't care how pretty that chart looks. This has to break its downtrend. This is right where the stock has failed so many times. You know, we just mark out all the different failures in here where we can't get through that level. And and something that took me a long time to figure out, um, I, I guess I'm really stubborn, but when I look at a chart like that, I'd have to ask myself the question, how many times does it have to fail at this level before I believe it's true? Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times it's failed right here. Is it possible, even with this bullish pattern, even with this little uptrend that's going on here, that this could fail right here? 
The answer to that is absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. So I want to get through that moving, I mean, I want to get through that 50-day moving average. I want to be above all of that right here, that moving average squeeze area. I want to be above that. Get me above that and then prove to me that it can be held. So I have an alert, an alert placed right here. That would be a real early potential entry into the trade. That pop out, I want that popping through and it would be perfectly acceptable. Let that pop through, let it pull back or consolidate and look for that next entry into the trend. And notice that we can just follow these trends as long as they continue. But here's one that could potentially be setting up and why I'm so picky about making the trade come to me. It has to break through. I, I will not continue to make the mistake that I made years and years ago of buying at price resistance, expecting something fantastic, okay? Because, or trying to predict that entry soon. Wait for it, wait for that um, entry to come into play. Here's an example of AMD. AMD was a trade we've entered um, in right way options. And here, once again, looking at that downtrend right here, and I saw this candle popping up here and I made this entry on this trade. Now notice we can make, uh, here's that first pullback, okay? Here's that pop-up entry and I took this position. Okay, notice by taking that position on this trade, I've had to wait for this position. It's moved over, it's pulled back, it's doing all of these things. And if I were to mark this trend on here, I wanna show you something, mark the trend. Isn't that amazing? So by taking that early entry in here, I have to be willing to hold because it could potentially move over to its trend before it really breaks out and gets an opportunity to go. Now, I'm not saying that this is ready to go just yet, but it, it's getting closer and closer to that place where it would be ready to go. So if you enter this early position right here, if you enter right here on this candle, you have to make sure and get that stop loss under those tails and be willing to hold this through that little little bit of consolidating back and back and fill type area here while this moves back to its trend and starts its move back up. Okay. So hey everyone, um, I hope you found this helpful, this little follow up and a little more detail on just the price action answering questions. Hey guys, if you could do me a favor, I don't charge anything for these uh, videos, taking the time to do these, putting together or anything. If you could do me a favor, um, click that subscribe button. Click that subscribe button on YouTube. Click those thumbs up buttons and please leave positive comments um, on these videos. I don't ask for much. I don't I, I don't charge for any of this. And um, if you could just take the time to um, click that thumbs up button, leave those comments. I truly appreciate that. What I'm trying to do with this channel, not make any money from the videos. That's not what I'm after. What I'm trying to do is help traders be better traders and, and share some of the things that I've learned over my 28 years of trading, uh, 14 years of those full time as a trader and um, pass on some of that knowledge to folks because I see so many people struggling. I see so many people suffering out there with their trading because of all of the hype and all of the, well, just the baloney, those guys out there hawking, you know, they're going to make you rich in no time at all. And, and, and just things like that. Um, uh, this is hopefully a, a method to kind of counteract that just some real common sense trading, no hype, no big promotion or anything like that. But if you can help me out by just supporting the channel, clicking that subscribe button, clicking on that bell icon um, when that pops up so that you make sure and be, get notified when I turn out videos like this. So everyone, I, 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 I want to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Just a relaxed holiday day here where I had some time, so I'm really low-key here today. I hope you don't mind. A little bit monotone probably, but just very low-key today um, on this holiday. So wanted to um, 
spend a little time kind of giving you some of those details, looking into that price action and showing you how you can really improve your trading dramatically by just removing that element of trying to predict, removing all of that um, idea that, you know, this getting rich quick kind of thing. Um, um, trading is a marathon. It's not a sprint. We just have to stick with a pattern and stick with the trade and just let that trade repeat itself over and over and over in these trends. And it's fantastic. Um, when you make that transition, I gotta tell you guys, I know this is hard. I, I know dealing with the emotion and dealing with the details of trading is, is a difficult process, but but let me tell you, it is worth it. So please don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your dream of being a trader because um, learning to settle in to something very, very simple and make uh, and very repeatable and just continuously being able to take money out of the market is a fantastic thing. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I will always want to wish you guys great profits and, and great success in your trading. If there's anything that we can do to help you here at Hit Run Candlesticks and Right Way Options, we'd love to talk to you about it. See if there's some way we can help you with your trading. But with that, Please subscribe and we'll talk to you all very, very soon. Have a good one, everyone.